Okay, good evening and welcome to chapter 26 of The Living Marriage. Today we're doing section 8, part number 3. Oh, he calls it part number 2, accepting lacks. Uh, we're talking about the problems in this section that cause potential shalom bias problems. Um, in the last chapter we talked about differences the couple has. You know, whether it be his personality, whether it be uh, Shkafa's backgrounds. Today we're talking about people as lacks, where... It's not just differences, nuances in terms of how you grew up. In terms of people actually have problems. As he opens the chapter with a husband who has a severe anger problem. I can imagine there's husbands like that. I mean, every person has an anger problem. I'm a man. I have an anger problem sometimes. You know, you work to control it, but you do get angry. If you don't get angry, you're not normal. If, you're not, if you don't get angry ever, you're not normal because people get angry. If something doesn't, you know... <clears throat> bruise your skin a little bit, you know, you're not normal, but um, you shouldn't be having an anger problem where you're always getting angry, that's a problem, so uh, he brings a story, someone came to him, a perfect newlyweds, and yeah, I'll read you what he says, still within the first few on the new wife, her, uh, picture of the perfect newlyweds, both are well known for their exemplary Mido's Tobas, leading with praises, a dream come true straight from heaven. Still, within the first month, the new wife has already begun to enter a state of panic. As she watches her dream crumble before her eyes, while her husband is a fine, caring person, he also has a bad attribute of anger, which often gets way out of control. With no choice, she calls her husband with tears in her eyes. What should I do if he gets angry and he starts banging the walls in anger? Her well-meaning husband tells her not to panic because she has a solution. The new wife will simply increase the chesed on and unending kindness that she does for her husband he will certainly stop getting angry at her. However, this works for two weeks, he says, and after it doesn't work. And then he says he's going to do better, and he doesn't do better, and he's still getting angry. What do you do? What do you do with such a situation like this? How could you live with an angry husband? Now listen, the guy's beating you physically, so that's a problem. And get help, and, you know, get out of that marriage if you can't stop. Um, <clears throat> if he's verbally abusing you, that's also very difficult. You should seek help. <laughs> um, depends. Some people are more emotional than others. It depends what a verbal abuse is, but just cursing you out and things like that. And, you know, it's normal for people to yell at each other and get angry at each other. But, you know, if the tirade is excessive or happens excessively, so it's something to be, to be worried about. But, um, You know, and there's other forms of domestic abuse also. But I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, you know, regular problems, you know, character deficiencies that people have. What do you do, right? Now, always it's always the problem with the husband. But, you know, let's talk about the wife. Sometimes the wives have problems. For example, they're not good wives. You look at the Gemara and Yavamos, the Gemara talks about what a bad wife is. A lot of people get married. Their wife's a bad wife. But they think their wife is a bad wife. I remember I had a friend who told me <clears throat> he got married. And he, they had a great relationship, I guess, dating. Once he gets married, he gets to the house, and his wife does nothing. She's sitting there. He's yelling at her, get up and clean. Get up and cook. Do something for me. You know? And she's sitting there. She's taking the credit card. She's going buying takeout. She's going buying jewelry, buying clothing. He, he's getting crazy. Is, what are you, this is marriage? You're supposed to do something. Clean the bathrooms. You know, and for years it bothered him, he told me. Until one time, he said, a couple of years later, she just started doing these things. Now, I am not uh, familiar with the particulars of his marriage, um, or what it was a marriage, but uh, I'm not going to tell you what happened to this person, but um, it's a secret for, for the reasons of privacy. Uh, but um, things change, and, and things can change in a marriage. And the author really doesn't talk about that so much. She talks about accepting. That's his solution over here. Um, you know, he talks about, he does talk about a lack of a woman. She's not truthful. She's lying to him. People can lie. They're not to be 100% truthful. Um, what do you do? He brings in an interesting story. Um, I personally learned this lesson, the author says, when I was approached by a young Avri who had been married for several months and wanted a divorce. Because he felt that his marriage was a clear mistake and was intentionally deceived by the shotgun. 
At first, I thought that this was a regular young man overreacting to an unexpected dimension in his life. But after talking to him for a short time, I recognized that he was an exceptional Torah scholar who had a uniquely strong sensitivity to truth. Amos, Amos, Tori Karta. In addition, he hated falsehood with all of his heart and simply could not exist in his proximity. When he was ready to look for a wife, everyone knew that he needed a young lady who also valued truth and hated falsehood. Like, we know what the truth is, right? Like every, well, he, he knew exactly everything that was truthful. When he met his future wife, he was convinced that she was like him in this respect. Within the first months of their marriage, he caught her lying, not once, not twice, three times. Three times! Three, three, three shakes her out. He was unable to continue living with her. He wanted to divorce her immediately and felt he didn't even need to give her a get. This is amazing. Because it was a mekach tos. He said it was a mistake. They deceived me. Right? Women, they all tell the truth. Except my wife. She's a shakronist. She lied three times. You know why women lie? They lie when they don't have an open relationship with their husband. And they're embarrassed of their husband. What the husband will say about things. And there's excessive fear in the house. That's when they lie to their husbands. If they have a caring and open relationship with their husband, the husband's a good husband, the wife won't lie. They'll be open to their husbands. That's just the truth. After several unsuccessful attempts to change his mind, I took him to the stipler. As we came before him, he looked at both of us. And before I could say a word, the stipler asked the young man if he had any unique qualities. The young man stood silently, not knowing, not stood silently, not knowing what to say. He told him a long story. He told him he has a very keen sense of truthfulness and, you know, she... He's not living up to the standards. The stipler told him that he's a murderer. This guy's a murderer. And he will murder in the future. I don't know. The stipler got a little cabalistic over here, you know. That no one in this world can be completely truthful. So you're completely truthful. But the element of chakronis and, you know, of, and, you know the, the element of falsehood in you, because this is a world of falsehood, is it found in your wife. You decided. You, when you were born, you had a decision. You want a little bit of falsehood in you, or you'll be a completely truthful person, and your wife will have falsehood in her. And that's what you chose. And if you divorce that wife, then you're going to become a person that's completely truthful, who can't exist in this world, and you're going to murder people because some, you know, you see this sometimes. People are kanayim, right? They think, you know, the problem is that they're not really truthful, right? They don't understand really what the truth of the world is. Just because you think you know what the truth is, and you believe in the literalism of the Torah, or the literalism of some other religion doesn't mean that literalism is actually the right way to go. You know, you know, people read Amelia Bedelia and they think, eh, it's a joke, you know, who's like Amelia Bedelia? But most religions, modern religions, including Judaism, you know, should be taken with a grain of salt, honestly, because, you know, literalism, so that's like, I'm sure in Judaism, you know, I got it that we don't take at face value. So why do you take the halakha at face value? Because you can't, you can't differentiate. So I got it that we don't take at face value because obviously, it can't be, you know, it's exaggerations. It's not meant to be taken truthful. But halacha, that we take at face value. We take halacha at face value. It's intertwined with Agatha. The Gemara often puts, you know, quotes Gemara's of Agatha to support halachic opinions, you know. So if the Gemara is intertwined with the two, there's obviously, you know, a message over here that even the halachic parts of the Gemara are not meant to be taken literally. They're written in a way that's a secret, right? One day we'll understand it, and Mashiach comes and teach us what the secrets of the Torah are. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't follow halacha. But it shouldn't be taking away halacha where it's death or, you know, either this or death. You know, like Yagav al It's not Yagav al It's not. It's not Yagav al um, <clears throat> It's not because literally the Torah is literal. It's like a million bedilia if you take it literally. Anyway, so this man was a truthful man. Um... He said, you'll kill people. You live in a world of falsehood. You're telling the you're in the Torah card. You know the truth, but nobody else knows the truth. It's, it's, a, it's a funny story. I mean, he said he's going to murder people, whatever. He ended up staying with his wife. And he said, this is Gan Eden. This is, people think it's Gehenna to live with a Shakranis. She lied three times with you. But it's really Gan Eden. I know why it's Gan Eden. It's not Gan Eden to live with someone who has, who has problems. The husband has an anger problem. The wife doesn't respect her husband. That's a problem of wives. They don't respect their husbands. You know, most women don't respect their husbands. It's a bad thing. You're supposed to, it's a, the cardinal sin of being a wife. They're supposed to give respect to your husband. That's what they need. The cardinal sin of being a husband is not giving love to your wife. That's what they need the most. So, <clears throat> but there are people who have lacks and, you know, so how do you deal with it? So he gives two different, basically. He said, love covers any iniquity. Like Mar the Apostle in Mishle says, Kol Ava. 
if you love someone truly, just like you love yourself and you have your own shortcomings, you still love yourself. Most people don't really love themselves, but they don't really, you know, give so much uh, importance to their shortcomings. So look over, you know, also your spouse is very hard to do this, but, you know, just like you have shortcomings, she's a human being. She has shortcomings. She should say the same. She, she should say the same, same thing about her husband. Just like I have shortcomings. He has shortcomings also. And the other approach, which he quotes from Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, he says, as soon as Rabbi Yisrael Salanter taught that every person has a positive virtue, which allows them to touch true greatness. And also they have a negative quality that can potentially bring them to extremely low. So, this Rabbi Yisrael Salanter taught that everyone has one really bad quality and one really good quality. It's the way it is. Other qualities are mediocre. But, midos. Um, so, Besides the fact, over just like I have shortcomings, she has shortcomings. Focus on yourself because you have something that's really, really bad in you, and you really have to work on it. So instead of focusing on her, work on yourself. You know, take your focus away. It's hard to do these things. The problem is these two advice, these two pieces of advice are very hard to implement. Um, what I would like to suggest with my little experience of marriage is, if you see something in your spouse that bothers you. Um, if it's a little bothersome, maybe overlook it, you know. Don't let it bother you so much. But if it's consuming you, something needs to be done. Something needs to be to address this problem. And what you gotta do is you gotta open communication because a lot of times problems, um, you know, even he says this this case about anger with this outbreak or something like that, we got very angry. The hu the husband didn't even know he had a problem with anger until his wife came forth and told him. A lot of times uh, people don't know they have problems. Um, or they have things that are bothering the other spouse. So when you have when you a lot when you have this situation where you have stupid watch, is a stop it. <laughs> stupid watch is beeping as fossil watch. <laughs> anyway, um, fossil smart watch. Anyway, so when you have, um. When you have problems, you have to you have to be open with it to the to, uh, have problems with your spouse. Tell your spouse that, that these things are bothering you. They might not even be aware they're doing anything wrong. So that's the first thing. Alert them that they're doing something that bothers you. Um, they have a deficiency. Don't tell them to work on it, right? Because it's not going to help, right? Don't get angry. It's good and saying, do this, do that. You're not you're not cleaning up. You know, clean up this, clean up that. You know, tell them. You know, I have a problem that you're not neat, right, or something like that. Or tell them, I have a problem with your anger. It's very important that other spouse should know you communicate and know what that problem is. And if you're two good people and you want to work on your marriage and you have a loving marriage, and obviously it starts with a husband who has to provide, he has to start and provide love to his wife and be a man and command respect. Because really the wife should respect him, but she's not going to respect him unless the husband becomes a man and commands respect. That's just the way women are. It's very hard for women to change. So they're very emotional. You know, it's easier for men to change things practically they're more practical women is very hard for them to change it's very emotional so you have to be a man that commands our respect so you have to start the husband's responsible he's 100 percent for the marriage the woman's zero percent this is the truth of marriage so <clears throat> you have to communicate what the problem is both the wife communicating to the husband the husband communicating to the wife and you have to tell her what the problem is now it's not always going to be fixed right away but you're giving the seed for it possibly to be fixed because if there's an availability that she can change something in the future, um, she'll know that what she's doing bothers you or you'll, or the husband will know what he's doing is bothering her. So as long as there's knowledge, that, that's the important because most couples have a very poor lack of communication. Right? This husband that talks about his wife is lying to him. Wives that lie to their husband, right? they're hiding things from their husband, it's because there's no good communication. It's not an open relationship. It's a very... You're not, you don't have a relationship, right? People hide things. They want to do their will, but they don't want to tell their, their spouse about them. Now, it's not, you know, it's people, couples will still, you know, people will still lie. They're always insecurities. People feel husband, husband and wife is not, you know, a perfect union where they're best of best of friends right away or maybe even ever um, due to a lot of differences than, you know, between people. But you can, have, you can work on that and have more openness and more communication in your marriage. That's the first step. And the second advice I would say is like the Gemara says, call up postal, but mumo postal. The Gemara says, anyone who finds deficiencies in a spouse, right? Usually the things that bother you 
are the same problems that you have yourself. Not like Rabbi Shal Salander said that you have your own thing to work on and she has her own negative deficiency, different ones. No, when you're seeing negative things in someone else, a lot of times you have those deficiencies yourself and you're just projecting your deficiencies on someone else, on the closest person, the person that you're around most of the time, and your wife, your spouse. So <clears throat> realize that if you're worried about yourself, if you if something bothers you, you, you're the best person to be able to fix that, right? If you're complaining your wife is not neat, right? Maybe you have a problem being neat, and maybe also you can help out, you, you know, clean the house also, you know? So um, you have to have communication, you have to be open with each other, and you have to realize that a lot of the problems that you see in your spouse are really your own problems and really coming from you. And if you communicate with your spouse and tell them what the problems are, they don't know, right? Or a lot of husbands get, get upset that their wife doesn't know, that can't read their mind, you know, doesn't want, you know, the right food, the right drink to bring, the right silverware to bring, you know, uh, different things that the husband likes. She cooks for him. She doesn't know what food he likes, you know, and a lot of husbands don't speak to their wives because a lot of times the husbands don't know what their own favorite food is and they're too embarrassed to talk about it or they don't know their personal preferences or they haven't communicated it to their wives. How are the wives supposed to know? Right? They're not Naveen. We always say they're not, they're not uh, prophecies. And the same thing, I don't, women don't have this feeling. So it's, it's part of honor, right? You feel honored when someone remembers your preferences, remembers what you like. Women don't really care about honor so much. So, you know, but they have certain things that bother them. If you're not showing them love, you're not buying them flowers and chocolates and loving them in the bedroom, which this book is talking about, then that's a serious problem. So it's much easier for a husband to communicate to a wife than a wife to open up his white women are weaker for them to open up and communicate to a husband and tell him about his negative quality. A lot of times they get very angry if she says it. Um, and it's hard for her to communicate it. To, but the husband should try, you know, to have open discussions. What am, what am I lacking? What's bothering you? He sees his wife sad. What's bothering you? Talk about it, you know. And secondly, things that are bothering you are usually your own problems. If you fix your own problems, right, if you're a person, right, your wife's not doing your preferences, but you then you realize, hey, I don't have any preference. I don't know what I, food I really like. I don't know what drink I really like. How am I, is my wife supposed to figure out what, what, what drink to serve me with dinner? Right? When you figure that out, then you'll know. You'll talk about it. She'll know, and she'll do it. Don't worry. She'll do it. So And she'll treat you with respect. If you command respect, she'll treat you with respect. Right? You, you, you're angry at your wife because she doesn't respect you. It's partly your problem, partially your problem, because you're not acting like a man. If you're a man... If you're a real man, a woman that commands a woman's respect, right? You know, Andrew Tate always says, you know, wives have to treat their husband with respect, you know. But uh, uh, women are, are people also, they're human beings, and they just don't do it. They, people treat people with respect who deserve respect. If you don't deserve respect, you're not going to get respect from a woman. So it's it's hard to get respect from a woman. But if you command respect, it's your pride. They don't blame it on the wife. You just don't command respect. Women, it's hard for women to change. They're emotional. So... That's all I have to say about this. Communicate and realize that your own problems that you see in the spouse, the problems you see in their spouse are really, a lot of them can be alleviated by you improving yourself, in which case the problem that you see in your spouse will automatically go away or at least be mitigated. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you in the next one.